Hey, what's up YouTube? We got an amazing update on the neural link which was done a couple of days back and those updates are near to the human trials and during that update they spoke about the vision of the product and which I find it pretty interesting. Here's what it is. On your wish list that you're really hoping that the neural link device will do over time that you're working towards. And uh, one of the things I think has great potential for the Neuralink is to provide a visual prosthesis for people who have retinal injury or blindness through eye injury. You can essentially uh, plug a camera directly into the visual cortex and stimulate with an enormous array of thousands or maybe tens of thousands of electrodes to recreate a, a visual image. And in time, perhaps, you can use that same technology in people who haven't lost vision to produce some kind of heads-up display. Um, something like uh, Terminator or something like that. <laughs> Wonderful. In, in fact, it's worth saying that like, over time we could actually give somebody supervision. Uh, like you could have like, uh, ultraviolet or infrared uh, or C and radar. I could basically name your frequency um, and, you, and you can just dynamically adjust the sensor or have s sensors that feed into the visual cortex across a wide range of, of frequencies and, ac and actually have uh, superhuman vision. Yeah, so for me, uh, telepathy. So I think it's an um, incredible amount of effort to put your thoughts into a set of words, and you know, it comes out completely compressed. So being able to do that seamlessly without being able to compress it with all of the mechanisms would be great. Why article? Um, I, um, I think Tim thought I said consensual telepathy, um, but I said conceptual telepathy. <laughs> I, a, a lot of our uh, brain uh, thought capacity is go, goes into uh, compressing our thoughts into words, um, and then you think of like the, the the data rate of words. Words are a very slow, very low data rate, and and we're putting a tremendous amount of mental energy into compressing the concepts and thoughts in our head into words, and then slowly talking. Speech is so very very slow, and uh, we could actually send. Um, the, the true thoughts that we can obviously have far better communication because we can convey the actual concepts, the actual thoughts uncompressed to somebody else. So to, to sort of follow up on Elon's thought, um, you know, I feel and I imagine a, a lot of other people feel the same way that there's a lot of um, sort of trapped creativity in your mind. You know, you can, for example, you know, close your eyes and conjure up like an incredible like Dali-esque scene. But, you know, if I wanted to actually show someone that, it would, yeah, it would take years of cra you know, honing a craft to be able to paint that. And so you know, potentially with enough electrodes in the right places, you could begin to sort of tap into those raw concepts or thought vectors and be able to um, decode that and, and show people. It could be for you know, art, you imagine music, or even for like engineering, like a three-dimensional model. And, like, so mental able. artistry is a new field. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really interested about solving things related to anxiety or depression or even like removing fear um like i'm an athlete and to like rock climb without fear would be pretty maybe need a little bit of fear yeah <laughs> just a little and also it'd be great if we could make the pigs fly but I... <laughs> you know i think having, achieving some kind of ai symbiosis uh where you have an ai extension of yourself uh like a tertiary layer above the limbic system and cortex um and uh and having that, having that symbiosis be good, such that the future of the world is controlled by the a combined will of the people of, of Earth, I think that that's obviously going to be the future that we want, presumably, is if it's the sum of our collective will. And um, and so I think it's it's going to be important from a, from an existential threat standpoint to achieve um, a, a good AI symbiosis, and that's uh, what I think is m m might be the, the most important thing that a device like this achieves. I know and love many humans with uh, autism spectrum disorder, so I'm really interested to see how the Neuralink might be able to support them if they chose to do that. Yeah, so I mean, everyone else along the line has had uh, you know amazing ideas and suggestions, and you know, for me, it's it's about you know memories, and everyone loses those memories over time. You know, I I already can't remember what happened to me when I was younger, and you know, I will, it'll only get worse, and so. Having a repository of memories that you can access whenever you want. If you're feeling down, you can go access some good memories. You know, if you you miss something or miss somebody, you can go and access those memories. And I, I think that would just be such a life-changing experience to be able to just tap into that. That was a, such a beautiful and diverse array of answers there. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thanks for tuning in. And um, as I said, uh, please consider working at uh, Neuralink.
and that's it for the video i hope you guys enjoy watching it thank you for watching do leave a like comment and i'll try to answer as much as possible and subscribe to have more videos like this